it goes back to like you said earlier on how they were raised their foundation because your childhood plays oh, a, yes. a important part in your adulthood whatsoever I happened to you in your childhood, day. i know it affects your adulthood i'm telling you that's why you see some adult they takes they are like a baby it takes forever to get over little things they hold on to little things because that like nobody never really sat them down when growing up to really mentor them to really tell them this is how it should be this is how you know this is how things should be this is how mm -hmm. uh maybe as a woman you should carry yourself this is how as a man you should carry yourself this is what you should expect from a man or from a friend because many people they have not really had that talk yeah. they don't know and they're already a grown mm. person so you're coming you're telling them these things they never heard before it's gonna take it's gonna take time and yeah. we all learn our different lens it's gonna take time for them to start seeing things the way you are seeing things i always say to people i i, I thank god for my parents and the people i had around me mm. growing up however yes i'm not perfect but i also like the people you have around you help you a whole lot like seriously i've seen yeah. people and it's just when you go do you dig deeper you're like oh i see where the problem is coming from the environment the parents the relatives i mean there are certain people found that you will meet you'll be like what is going on here like <laughs> What's happening? <laughs> <laughs> oh gosh. <laughs> oh, I laugh every time I speak to you. You're hilarious. And I understand that's why I'm laughing. <laughs> it, it is. <laughs> it's like, your... Where did it all go wrong? Like what what has literally happened to you in life to make you this way? <laughs> Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> Tata, Trina, I know. Sad says, "Look at Papa preaching. She's incredible, right?" Mm -hmm. she, she knows me from from way back. That's why she's saying that. Uh, okay, <laughs> but it's, yeah, it's, it's yeah. Important. It's very important to have positive people around you. And as a parent, mm. you must do your own. You must help your child to have positive people around them. Some people say, "Oh, they're, they're too overprotective," but I mean, mm -hmm. there's there's overprotecting and there's also protecting your child from certain people because you know yeah. if you send your child to that particular house, you know what's gonna happen? They're gonna come back and start with some weird behavior, and you know, <laughs> you know mm -hmm. what you want yeah. to see in your child. You know, <laughs> so don't let them associate themselves with people that you don't want them around. Absolutely, because they'll come home with some behavioral patterns that you don't agree with completely. Barbara, okay, look, before I move on to the third question, right? Yeah. I was listening to um, Steffi and Adam Cromag speak earlier, right? Yeah. And I, I've always, I th I'm sure we had a discussion about this. This has nothing to do with self-esteem. I'm just curious. I'm always curious about different things, right? So Steffi was saying that she went on a date. Steffi, I had to bring it here. I'm sorry, because I, I didn't have the time to um, write everything I want to write. So she went on yeah. a date and um, I think they were talking about, well, they weren't talking about expectations, but I want to talk about expectations when you go on a date, right? Does the guy always have to pay um, on a first date? Does it matter who suggested the place or who initiated the date? Because if the girl says, okay, I want to go on a date with you, the guy, right? Yeah. Does that mean she's supposed to pay for your date? How does it work? Or should you just not go there with any expectations? Whoever pays, pays, and that's how it is. First of all, I would say don't go with any expect so high expectation because these things can lead to disappointment, yeah? <laughs> <laughs> just be realistic. <laughs> this, ladies and gentlemen, I'm telling you, just oh be gosh, realistic. Yeah. It doesn't really matter who initiated uh, the date, the place. It really doesn't matter. Look, mm -hmm. if you go there, that's why people have to keep an open mind. If he wants to pay, that's fine. If she wants to pay, that's fine. If they want to share the bill, that's also fine. 
that's let's, so let's get out yeah. of that bubble. And also, don't take advantage just because he wants to pay or she wants to pay, and then the next time you keep your card at home. <laughs> don't do it. <laughs> I've heard stories. <laughs> Oh God! <laughs> don't make that mistake, please. Don't do it. <laughs> oh my <Barbara>, God! <laughs> I can't help but laugh. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Don't don't do that. I think it's all about expectations. I know society has taught us or traditionally whatever it is that you know men should have to pay for the first date but a lot of women are going to be disappointed if they go there with that expectation because some men are expecting you to split the bill with them and they genuinely want you to split it of or course offer to pay and of course. i don't think that, that should be a problem but it really does depend on you and that guy and remember this could be a first date of course so yeah do you think she will, she will, yeah. before on the date barbara sorry Is it something you should discuss before you go on the date? Or would that be a complete mood killer? No, I think I think you should always discuss this. You know the thing we said, this is a silly question or it doesn't matter. Or it's just little things. Mm -hmm. I would say, please, this is what people say I talk a lot. Talk about it, please. Because... <laughs> <laughs> to avoid disappointment, right? <laughs> <laughs> talk about the silly things ask those stupid questions who's gonna pay yeah. where are we going what's the menu like you know what this is what me and my friends what we do in our little group before we go out we research mm -hmm. the place and we put the menu in the group so you know how much the food costs so you know the kind of food that's gonna be on the menu so mm -hmm. you look at everything in the group chat so you're prepared so if we can yeah. do that as friends why don't we do that when we are talking to the opposite sex yeah. This is the menu. This is where the place is located. It's quite a rich area or expensive area. Blah, blah, blah. This is the menu. You print, you print shot it. Send it to this yeah. guy. He sent it to you. So everybody knows what, what to expect. I mean, you of can't course. just go blindfolded. What do you yeah. think this is? <laughs> oh, gosh. I can't bother you. You're something else. Um, Flo says, I actually look at the menu before going. So do I. Um, Alicia said she's never paid on a date. Well, you are one of the fortunate ones for sure. Um, Flo says, I don't discuss. I just go with money. I believe that's what she means. Um, Henny say... and you probably won't vice versa but um i'm all for i think the saying is going dutch i'm all for it it's not a big deal to me so far as i have a job if i don't have a job i don't have a clue why i'm going on a date because obviously i won't be able to afford anything so i need to stay at home let's do the <laughs> let's do the virtual thing and message each other until i get a job or something because <laughs> none of us are going out to eat anyway um, no, but funny thing, you just have to, you just have to say, I'll never I'm not working. Go on, go on. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Be, be transparent. Don't lie. Don't lie. Say, look, I'm, I'm out of work now, so um, I, I won't be able to pay. And if, if he want, if he volunteers and say, don't worry about it, come yeah. on. Or if she says, don't worry about it, then you can go. But when you do, when you do get that job, take them out to say thank you <laughs> be appreciative oh yeah oh yeah absolutely don't absolutely. just leave it and say and then, people take a bath from there discuss... go on there sorry many people who take advantage of people I, I just don't get it um yeah i i came across a tweet not too long ago and um girls were asked the question what would you do if your date arrived in a car that was like a broken down car, like it, I mean, the paint was scratched and, you know, the windows were cracked, not broken, but the, the car wasn't like a Tesla. It wasn't a, the latest car, a Mercedes or anything like that. And some girls would be like, um, I would 
look at the car and say, oh, sorry, I'm not feeling so well, I can't go on the date. You know you're going to miss out on a good man for that silly, silly reason, right? You could miss, on, miss out on an incredible husband. What kind of materialism, what are you doing? What is wrong with some people? How? Why? I, just, I was so confused looking at, I, you know, I wasn't even confused. I was so disappointed in some of the responses I saw from girls. Like they would say, oh, I'm not going on the date. Or one girl was like, well, if your car, if your car isn't up to par or isn't up to some sort of standard, then you have to pay for the date. Love, do you have a job? Do you, forget a job, do you have a car? Aren't you still living with your parents? You shouldn't be talking about anybody's car. As a matter of fact, as the guy, I would say, forget it. We're not going anywhere anymore. <laughs> Go back no. home. <laughs> We're not going on any date. I will find someone along the way as I'm driving home. I can't stand some people. But my God. <laughs> I can't stand some people. If you're going to go behind a man just because of his, of his things, believe me, then you don't like him. You like what he yeah. has. You don't like him. Mm -hmm. You can't. You can't be with someone because of their car. What happens if that car is no longer there? That means your likeness for for the car goes away. Okay, let's move on to. Let's. Oh, it will come back regardless. Please come back if we just okay. vanish for um, a few seconds. But the last question was: What are the results or the outcome of overcoming self low self esteem? So if we, yeah. if we, um, if we're cut off, please do come back and join us because we'll wrap up this okay. last question. Yeah. So I think with the results, you will see that you will respond to failure quickly and bounce back and okay. you will work on, on like, once you're bouncing back, you're bouncing back with more ideas. You're finding out why it didn't work out. You are, you're saying, mm -hmm. okay, I, I will try and do this again, but differently and you will you'll be you look at life in a different way that you know self-pity and crying and prolonging things and just you know continuously self-criticizing -crit yourself all the time okay so you were talking about how you know you've overcome um having low self-esteem yeah so you will no longer be vulnerable to or at the mercy of people letting you down. I mean, people let you down, mm. you bounce back. Mm. You will not take it personal and you won't be hanging on to it like forever. 10 years later, you're still talking about it. I mean, you realize that. <laughs> Life goes on. 